Okay, 2.4, the rule of sum. And so the goal here is to use permutations and the rule of sum to solve counting problems. Okay, so we're going to go back and just kind of review the um, fundamental counting principle. Uh, so remember that uh, if you, when you use this when you have uh, one event and another event uh, that occur together. And uh, that fundamental counting principle uh, leads to this multiplicative principle or the multiplicative rule uh, for independent events, where if you had two events, A and B, the uh, number of outcomes of uh, A times the number of outcomes of B would equal the number of outcomes of A, both A and B, okay? And the rule of sum, so we used the rule of sum back in chapter one, and we used the rule of sum when we had one event or another event uh, that occurs. And uh, when you had mutually exclusive events, meaning you had your two events had no common elements or no common outcomes, then all you have to do is just add up the outcomes of each event, okay? Uh, and when we had non-mutually exclusive events, then that's the case where, you know, on your Venn diagram, you had two overlapping circles. So you have two events that have that share uh, common outcomes or common elements. So you have to add the number of uh, outcomes for both events, but subtract the intersection because of that uh, extra uh, copy of, uh, of outcomes, okay? So now we're gonna apply permutations to all of this, okay? We're gonna apply permutations to help us do our counting uh, of all these different kinds of uh, uh, ways we get even these events, independent, mutually exclusive, non mutually exclusive. So let's go through some examples. So here, example number one, at an international conference, in how many different arrangements could the country's flags be flown if eight or nine countries attend. So by using our permutations, if we had, so let's say if we had eight countries, so if eight countries attend, then the number of arrangements of eight flags would be eight factorial. If nine countries attend, then the number of arrangements of nine flags would be nine factorial. Okay, so if the question is, so if eight or nine countries uh, attend, then the probability, this is, remember, this is, these are, these are, uh, uh, this is an event where we're going to use the additive principle, the additive counting principle, or the rule of sum. So we just add the 8 factorial with the 9 factorial. So 8 factorial plus 9 factorial. And that gives us 403,200 possible arrangements. Okay, so the, remember the key idea here is this or, okay, and the question says or. So whenever you see or, that means it is additive. We're not multiplying, we are adding, okay? So uh, in this particular case, we do have uh, two, two, two mutually exclusive events. So one event is when you have eight countries, the other event has nine countries. So we just, we just add, there are no intersections, so we simply just add the two. Um, to uh, permutations, okay? Now, what if it's seven, eight, or nine countries that attend? Well, quite simply, you just, again, add the, do the additive counting principle because of this keyword or. So we're gonna, we're gonna add seven factorial plus eight factorial plus nine factorial. And when we add those three together, uh, we get 408,240 possible arrangements. All right. Uh, so a little bit, let's throw in some more uh, uh, wrenches here. So let's, so now we have a question where it says seven, eight, or nine countries attend, but the host country's flag is always on the far left. So now we are introducing uh, uh, a restriction, okay, and that restriction is going to change everything. 
So the host country's flag must be first. So uh, once you have that condition in place, then think about, well, what, how many flags are left over? So um, in the case where seven countries come in, then you put the first country, host country's flag first, and you have six other flags left to fly. When you have eight countries, then you're going to have seven other flags left to fly. And if you have nine countries, then you have eight flags left to fly, because that first one is always the host country. So I'm going to write here, uh, since the host country uh, flag must be first, There are six, seven, or eight flags to fly. So the additive counting principle, or the rule of sum, tells us that I will take six factorial for those six flags, plus seven factorial for those seven flags, and eight plus eight factorial. For the, the event where we have nine countries attend. And if I add those three together, I get 46,080 arrangements possible. Okay, so let's go on to our next example, example number two. So there, three players are playing the card game Pass the Ace. Each player receives one card. In how many ways could the cards all be face cards or red cards? Ah, face cards or red cards. So you have to think about, is this a mutually exclusive event? Well, it is not. It is a non-mutually exclusive event because uh, these events have something in common. Okay, so I'm gonna write here, apply. So we're gonna apply. So we're gonna use the rule for non-mutually exclusive events, and this is the principle of inclusion and exclusion. So apply the principle of inclusion and exclusion since the events are non-mutually exclusive. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, we have red cards, right? So red cards, red cards, that's one event. How many how many possible outcomes are there? Well, there are 26 red cards in a standard deck of 52 cards. Ah, what about the other thing? We have face cards for the other events. So face cards, how many possible outcomes are there for face cards? Well, you have a jack, queen, and king, and four different suits. So three times four is 12, 12 different outcomes for the face cards. But how many of those face cards are red face cards? So red face cards. This is the intersection of both. So if the first set is red cards and the second set is face cards, then the red face cards is the intersection of uh, both sets here. And we only have uh, so red face cards. So jack, queen, king of diamonds, jack, queen, king of hearts. So a total of six uh, outcomes there. So if you use the principle of inclusion and exclusion, so that all the way back up here, this is what uh, that is. So principle of inclusion and exclusion would be to add the outcomes of both events and then subtract the intersection of both events, A and B. So I'm going to express this now using my permutations. Uh, so remember, there, there are three players playing the card game past the ace, so we're going to be dealing three cards. So I'm interested in choosing. Uh, so my permutation is going to be how many ways can you arrange uh, uh, 26, uh, 26 cards into a three? So 
uh, uh, dealing three, but uh, choosing from 26 or uh, arranging 26 cards. Um, that takes care of the red cards. Then the permutation, the number of arrangements for the face card. So that's going to be 12P3. And I'm going to subtract the intersection. So the number of uh, red face cards, which is 6P3. Uh, uh, so the arrangement of those red face cards when you're dealing uh, three cards. Okay. So this is how, that's how I do it with the permutations. And so this is going to equal 1,320 plus 15,600 minus 120, which is 16,800. So therefore, there are 16,800 ways to deal three face cards or three red cards. Okay, so yeah, that's the entire point of the problem. Let's just re re recap. You want to deal, so how many ways could the cards be all, all face cards or all red cards? So, the, the ways of arranging 26 uh, red cards uh, in, in, into arrangement of just uh, three, uh, plus the 12 face cards uh, that you can get uh, when you're arranging, dealing three, and then subtracting the intersection. Okay, it has to be or. It can't be both a face card and a red card. Part B, in how many ways could the cards be all aces or all hearts? Well, we have 13 hearts. Let's just write this down. So 13 hearts. And we have four aces. And it turns out that we do have one ace of hearts. So that's your uh, intersect between the two events. If the first event is hearts and the second event is draw, uh, aces, then the intersection will be just the ace of hearts. So in how many ways could the cards be all aces or all hearts? So again, we're still dealing three cards. So I'm interested in finding the arrangement of um, of 13 p3 plus uh, 4 p3 uh, minus the uh, the one card that we have there the ace of hearts and uh, finding these arrangements here would I would have 1716 plus 24 minus 1 which is 1739 so this says therefore there are 1,739 ways to deal three cards that are all aces or all hearts. Okay, let's go up to example three. Ten members of a basketball team are lining up for their medals after a tournament. In how many ways can this be done if there are no restrictions? So t if we're talking about ten members, so how many ways can you arrange ten members of a basketball team? Uh, if there's no restriction, well, that's just ten factorial, which is uh, 3,628,800 possibilities. The captain and assistant captain must sit together. So for part B, the captain and assistant captain must sit together. So the way you look that treat this is you treat the captain and the assistant captain as one single unit. So if I had 10 players, so 10 members, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I would just maybe box off two of them. I'd treat this as a single unit. So how do you arrange the captain and the assistant captain? Well, there are two factorial ways, two ways. The captain can be on the left and the assistant can be on the right, or the assistant can be on the left and the captain can be on the right. For every L1 else in the team, well, there are just uh, 
uh, nine units to arrange. So it's going to be just nine factorial. So we're looking at you know, one, two, three, four. The box is uh, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine possible uh, items to arrange. So uh, in this particular case, I'm looking at nine factorial times two factorial, uh, which is 725,000. 760 uh, possibilities. Uh, so now part C, the captain and the assistant captain must not sit together. Well, to this, to solve this one, I'm going to use an indirect method. So let's write this down, indirect method. So I'm going to, when we do the indirect method, it often involves us subtracting uh, something from the total number of possibilities. So we're going to subtract. Uh, what we're going to subtract is the number of ways uh, that the captain and the assistant captain uh, are together. Uh, from the total without restrictions. So in other words, we're just going to subtract the values that we got from the answer for A, uh, take away the answer that we got for B. Okay. So essentially what we're calculating here is 10 factorial minus 9 factorial 2 factorial, which is equal to 3, 6, 2, 8, 800 minus 725,760. And this is equal to 2,903,040 possibilities. Uh, example number four, in how many ways could the letters in the word factor be arranged so that the vowels are not together? So factor, I have six letters here. So I have to uh, look about, uh, think about, well, what's the total number of possible ways to arrange factor? Well, that's just six factorial, six letters, six factorial ways to arrange them. But if the vowels are not together, then, you know, think about the indirect method again. So one, two, three, four, five, six. What if the vowels were together? Well, there are two factorial ways to arrange those two vowels that I have, uh, which means I have five units left, so five factorial for everything else, right? So then if I wanted to find the uh, ways that the vowels are not together, then the indirect method says that I take the total possibility, six factorial, I subtract the, uh, the, the, the arrangements of having the vowels together, which is five factorial times uh, two factorial, and this results in an answer of, uh, well, let's just simplify one more step, 720 minus 240, and that's equal to 480 uh, letter arrangements. Okay, part B, all consonants are not together. Uh, okay, so same idea. Just use the indirect method because it's a lot easier. So think of the case when the consonants are together. So if you had four consonants in the word factor, uh, and then you'd arrange them. How many ways can you arrange them? Well, there are four factorial ways you can arrange the consonants when they're together. Uh, and this, this is treated as one unit. So I have one, two, th uh, three left. So the number of ways to arrange everything else is uh, three factorial. So then the case where the consonants are not together would just be using the indirect method. You take the total possibility, six factorial, and you subtract the possibilities where the consonants are together, four factorial and three factorial. Uh, and so I get 720 minus 144, which is 576 uh, letter arrangements. Uh, part C, the vowels are together or the consonants are together. Uh, okay, a little bit, so or now, or, or, or. So we're using the uh, additive rule uh, uh, here again. So when the vowels are together, so I'm going to just, again, write one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so when the vowels are together, that's two factorial, and that leaves uh, 
five units to uh, find the arrangement uh, arrangements of. So this is the two vowel case, and we have the or. The consonants are together. So when the consonants are together, one, two, three, four, five, six. Looking at what happens when we have these four consonants together. So four factorial to arrange the consonants, and three factorial to arrange everything else. So this is the case where you have the four consonants. So then what is the total number of arrangements when, of, uh, of both together, so vowels or consonants? So the way you calculate this is you take uh, 5 factorial times 2 factorial, and you add it with 4 factorial times 3 factorial. And that gives me uh, 240 plus 144, and if I add those two together, I get 384 arrangements. Uh, part D, the vowels are together and the consonants are together. So let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that would look something like this. Vowels together is two factorial. Consonants together is four factorial. And then um, you can either put the vowels first or you can put the consonants first. So you have two factorial ways of arranging the units. So if I multiply all these three together, uh, two factorial times two factorial times four factorial, I get 20. Uh, 2 times 2 times 24, which is 96 arrangements.